other CO two like emissions CO2 in the like atmosphere? Emissions. Is the water? Why is is he cutting out for everyone or just me? Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry. Why, why is water vapor driven by humans? Oh, water vapor is not directly driven by humans, but it is a thing that is increasing. So you asked me for what is increasing. We can get into the human elements in just a little bit, but I, I'm just giving you the outline. The outline is that water vapor and human-derived uh, carbon and N2O and methane, et cetera, emissions are increasing in the atmosphere. Which is increasing, which is increasing the greenhouse. Let's just let's just be let's just be clear about his position. Do you deny that the climate is changing temperature, or are you just denying that humans are causing it? Uh, so temperature changes. For, sorry, don't for, forget forget the temperature change. Just overall overall change, not just temperature. Do you do you agree that there's change happening, uh, overall, or 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 do I mean, you, and climate, you just disagree listen, that? Wait wait one sec. Do you agree okay, that the okay. change is happening and you're just denying that it's caused or contributed to significantly by humans? Or do you not even agree that the change is happening? I, I would say um, climate is dynamic inherently. Of course, sure. climate, climate can rapidly change. But right now, we don't see rapid changes. We see actually, uh, uh, say, in Greenland, there's actually been an increase or de deceleration and increase in ice, in ice sheet growth. We don't see intensification of hurricanes in terms of total cyclone accumula accumulated cyclone energy, total number of cyclones. We're not seeing an intensification intensification in precipitation either in uh, drought and dryness. We're really not seeing uh, intensification in climate conditions. It's really it's a self fulfilling prophecy in that you're, uh, of course, humans are just are destroying the environment in many ways. I'm not going to deny it. I'm. I'm a beginner, I'm an environmentalist, but it's this sort of circular logic where any uh, sort of variation in the climate we're going to attribute to humans. And it's, it's kind of this like anti, this misanthropic anti-civilization uh, nexus of certain vegans and uh, I don't know what to call them, like technocrat liberals, I, I suppose. So it's really, <laughs> in, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my opinion, uh, it's, it's pseudoscience. The vast majority of changes in the climate can be attributed to variations in insulation. For for example, uh, it's been found that, and maybe I'll, I'll I'll link this paper if I I can link papers in here, right, in the chat. So there, there's a there's a great paper that was written on um, low CO two in concert with other effects actually causing deglaciation because low and when you have very low CO two levels, uh, then you can give low CO2 as, as a result of uh, carbon sequestration in the ocean, then you can get an, in, an, an increase in densification. And that actually reduces albedo, albedo of the ice caps, uh, causing a warming trend. And that can actually, that's ca that causes a, a deglaciation effect. And, that, and there's really no historical correlation between, well, I mean, yeah, I know you're talking about water vapor, but the, Anthropogenic climate change narrative is really premised on increasing CO2 emissions, and then they, they all talk about methane. And even if, if you want to say that as a, a substantial increase in the, in the methane is due to humans, there's, there's really no, there's no actual consensus on these, these um, so-called methane loops that I've been hearing about. It's pseudoscience. People like, you know, I'm hey, gonna just, to, just, to, just to hold you up, you. Yeah, so okay, now, okay. Before, before you start to get into rhetoric about consensus... We already agreed the consensus in terms of raw numbers of scientists who believe in it is not the important factor. Okay. What we yeah. want to look at is what we want to look at is systematic reviews of the evidence. And so, what I'd ask you is, if what you're saying is correct, why is it then that the CMIP models have tracked so well with increases in temperature say, over time? Say, say, say that. Oh, say that again. Yeah. Why have the CMIP uh, Tracked well with temperature increases over time. CMI. What is what is CMI? What are you saying? CMIP. CMIP, which is what? Well, one thing I'm doing right now is seeing if you actually even know what you're talking about. A very basic inference that you can make is that if someone doesn't even know what the CMIP is, that they probably don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so the CMIP yeah, is the, the, CM, the, CM, the CMIP is the collection of models Couple that models infer that, that, that infer that infer pathways based on levels of various greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and other climate forcings. And what we've yeah, seen is that, I'm, that the, collect, the collection of these models is tracked with both historical and contemporary temperatures 
and other climate events over time. The problem with the model, even NASA admits that no, 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 have to explain to me why the CMIP tracks so well with both historical and contemporary uh, empirical measurements. Because CO2 lags behind temperature by over by yeah, and this, thousand right, years. All right. It lags behind. So this is it a does correlation. Not, it does not lag behind. It does not lag by that long. It la has a lag it's time a of it has a lag time it, of forty years. No, it's been found historically to be eight hundred to a thousand years. And there are, there's also correlations. They're more significant. For example, Why? how could it possibly? No, 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 no. How could it possibly be 800 to 1,000 years? What is when the when the global warming potential half life is 40 years? Okay, everyone knows correlation is not like causation. That's I'm not no saying problem. that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. And what you're doing right now? Is Why are we trusting the validity of climate models? Why would we trust? Why are we trusting the validity of climate models? Climate models? Yeah, because they have tracked with the empirical measurements on a system uh, systematic level. Okay, that's why you... I asked you. What, that's why that's why I asked you about the CMIP because the CMIP okay. is the collection of weighted evidence against the collection of models that have existed, and they take into account all forms of forcing, including the ones that you mentioned. And so, even your countervailing tendencies that you've mentioned are taken into account by climate scientists. No one's not oh. taking into account things that's like carbon really sequestration. True. And that's necessarily uh, true, though. That is necessarily true. So, so, no, so, 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 how? So, there's, ur there's, so, there's urban heat. There's urban heat islands. Yep, that's taken into account. That's taken into account. Not, that is taken into account in CMIP five and CMIP. It's, CMI it's not adequately taken into right, account. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. No. 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 I'm not going to let. No. 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 I'm not going to let you get away with just saying it's not adequately taken into account. It's not. What I. We're at this point now where you're starting to make empirical claims. And so what I want, I want you, what you to do is present to me some kind of peer-reviewed literature. On what? Or some kind of reason for me I to believe you why it's reviewed. not taken into account. Okay. Sure. So just show me why it's not taken into okay. account. Because in several areas, for example, um, China and Australia, there's been peer-reviewed literature that's found that if you actually remove the urban heat island camp contamination, it's around like 60... 70%. In, in some cases, I believe it was the Australian study, there's, been, there's no increase in warming over the past several decades, if you remove the, if you remove the urban heat island the, the contamination, so the, they'll say, "Oh, we can't, we take into account all these considerations," but you're relying on the validity of these organizations. Uh, I'm not relying and, on the validity. I'm not relying on the validity. Found which have been found data. I'm not. I'm not relying. I'm not relying. No, I'm not relying on the validity of NOAA. And moreover. I know what you're referring to when you're talking about the manipulation of data. You're referring to the introduction okay. of, the, of the U.S. non-historical climate record, which is not a manipulation of the data. It's a verification what is, of the data. What is the mechanism by which CO2 increases temperature? Yeah, so what it acts. Yeah, it, it, explain, of course, it's a clean mechanism. So what's the mechanism? Yeah, I, so that, I, I can tell you more. A, a much more logical, clear and correlative mechanism for temperature increase, which does not rely on CO2, because the mechanism itself is nonsense, and they've debunked the mechanism. I'll, 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 I'll go about that later, but tell me, what's the mechanism by which CO2 increases temperature? Yeah, so it's an anti-radiative forcing, so by causing a greenhouse effect. Okay, you know the, the greenhouse effect of CO2, it's like logarithmic, so past the first yeah. 20 parts per million or so, it's... It, yeah, I'm aware. It's, I'm it's, aware. These are these are the like the fact that there is a curve of impact is taken into account in pretty much every model. So what? So again, what I would like you to do is refer to is refer to some kind of empirical reason why I should reject the CMIP. Because it's still track. It's still a correlation, and I, I yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but all yeah, but all science is correlative. We're in, no, we're, no, we're, that's not necessarily true. Yeah, I mean, all science is correlative. We make an inductive. Okay, but there's also we make it. We make an. We make an. We make an, we make an inductive factor. leap. We make an inductive leap to causation through the elimination of countervailing factors, which is okay. what the CM, which is what the point of the CMIP is. Okay, is that you have a yeah, you have an abundant you have an abundance of correlative studies that, once taken all together, allow you to isolate exactly how much each thing inductively is causing climate change. And there's also there's, there's a problem in terms of the the peer review literature process. I don't I, want you. I, I don't. I don't want you to so, hop from topic to topic. We can get into peer reviewed. I'm very skeptical it, of peer review uh, too. Okay. But what I'm interested in is. But what I want. What I'm interested in is. I want you to explain to me 
why, given the CMIP, I should reject the fact because that it has tracked with both historical and contemporary measures since nearly 2004. Because you can say the same thing about cloud coverage itself. It's like a one-to-one -one track. So yeah, yeah, but the, the problem so the problem with it's the problem with the, and, and so like cloud you're, coverage. So you're talking about so you're talking about cloud coverage and like um, like aerosol uh, like solubility and whatnot relating to climate change. No, I'm, 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 talk I'm talking about you graph. There's like there's a one-to-one -one correlation between cloud coverage. No, I know, I, I, I know, I, yeah, I know what I know what you're talking cloud, about. Cloud I know what you're talking about. Up. Yeah, I know. I know, I know yeah. what you're talking about. One this one, is, right? But the problem and, and, and with the problem with the, pro the problem that, the no problem the problem no. with that is that it can be one to one in terms of like linear relation. But the problem is, is that it only accounts for a certain component of the I one. Can, I can send you. And so the point, the, the reason, the reason, the reason that says it, it, that cloud coverage alone right. explains yeah. the temperature, temperature variability. Yeah, post post it right now. Um, yeah, post it right now. Yeah, we'll, me, refer, me, we'll, refer, just... we'll refer to the literature that cites it. This yeah, I'll, I'll post that. that. It's, it's actually it's it, it's a study from the Russian um, hydrometer lot hydro mm -hmm. I'm aware. I'm aware. Post. I'm right. aware. Post it, and we'll get post it, and we'll get into. Biologist, though, knows his way around the sciences, though. Own the libs, though. Shot! Appeals to authority. I'm not really a conservative. If that's what you're implying, but I want you to just post the evidence. Of this. Yeah, we're we're talking at like an empirical level. So what I want you to do is show evidence that shows that cloud coverage as a forcing is completely abstracted from anthropogenic means, which I think is easy to, easy to reject. And moreover, that it explains the total of climate change instead of just representing a component of it, because we have many forcings that can track with climate change. For example, you can look at the solar forcing tracking. But that doesn't explain all of climate change. There's no plausible mechanism for CO2 causing the increase. Yeah, there is. Either. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, there is. No, there's no. Yeah, yeah, there is. The, 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 I, I heard what you said. The, 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 the Here's my rebuttal of that. I heard what you said about that. Here's my rebuttal of that. So the problem with that is it's admitted that CO2 is an, extremely, is an extremely weak greenhouse gas that's yeah. emitted no by one, everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, no one, but, no one but, rejects, no one rejects I, that. I, I so know, we, know, no but, one rejects but, that. And so what we can go do, no, what we can go do, that. yeah, but I'm not letting you get away, I'm not letting you get away with cheap shots like that, right? So the point is, it's an overall weak greenhouse gas, but the point is, is that we've been releasing so much of it that the cumulative problem has resulted in a certain level We've of warming. We've not been releasing that much cumulatively. In fact, there was there was a study that was just published. Okay, I'm uh, no, no, in, in no, 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 no. At this point, you're at like no, no. You're, you're at a backlog of like six papers that you owe me. So what we're going to do is at this point, we're going to take a pause in the debate. Okay. If anyone talks to him, I'm going to request that a moderator mute him. What? And then okay. at this point, at this point, I'm just going to request that he actually starts presenting any kind of evidence for his position that other kinds of forcings overcome. The general idea of anthropogenic I, global warming. I, I just I just linked the particular study about cloud coverage. I was referring to. I'll, I'll link I'll, it in general. I've I've I have an, I have an image of the of the abstract in English, and it just says that cloud coverage very very Just post the link. Alone, oh yeah, alone. I I posted the link. I'll, I'll, I have to pull up the picture that I have of the abstract. So because it's English, and it, but what it, what it says is cloud coverage alone. Where's the link? The variability I posted in the I posted in the debate crucible. It's the last thing that I that I commented or posted. It's there, and it, what it says in the, in the abstract is cloud coverage alone can explain the temperature variability between uh, eighty, I think eighty five and twenty. Uh, I, I, forget the, I forget the exact end point they used, but uh, you know what the um, English title is of this. Could, what was that? What's the English title of this? So, just so I can find that the English version.
Did you hear me? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm just copying the English um, title of your article. Thanks. Sorry, Bryn. I just want to know what paper you're referring to. Okay, I just copied and pasted the English name of your article. And there's a screenshot of... Yeah, so, so the usual response to Pakatovsky is that what they're doing in this paper is analyzing, like you said, like a, a time invariant, uh, like coefficient analysis. And that's true. The problem is, is that what this paper is not showing is that this explains the entirety of the climate force. So what you have to do is you have to look at the climate forcing due to cloud coverage and cloud variability in the context of the full... Uh, availability of models and climate forcings that we know of. And so when you actually look at the total impact of cloud coverage and climate forcing on a global scale, which my paper that I just posted does, what we see is that it actually, what it ends up being is more of a feedback mechanism that amplifies climate change. And that overall, um, the, it doesn't actually dissuade us from coming to the conclusion that climate change as we know it is currently anthropogenically driven. I mean, so one thing. So one thing that occurs yeah. is that due due to the increase of certain kinds of greenhouse gas emissions and the depletion of certain other uh, anti forcings in the environment, what we can see is that the cloud coverage variability is largely exacerbated by anthropogenic causes, which just means that all that the cloud coverage thing does is explain why we see even increased warming versus the models. If we had actually gotten deeper into the fact that the empirics line up with the CMIP models, what we could also point out is that what they've actually done is tended towards the higher end of the models rather than the lower end of the models. And one thing that helps explain that is this cloud variability paper that you've posted yourself. So your cloud variability paper actually ends up showing more so that climate change seems to be anthropogenic and that it seems to be even more desperate than what we usually talk about. The problem is that uh, one, the total human contribution of rising, uh, the increase of CO2 emissions since 1750, this is a paper that was published in June, I can adduce it at all. It was published in June of this year, and it found that the anthropogenic contribution of CO2 was 15% total since 1750, and 4.3%, um, I believe the figure was, for the average yeah, so what are so, so, accumulation right, right now? So, so, th so those are relatively minor contributions to the increase right. in, in parts per million of CO2. Right. And, and, right. And, and, and additionally, the mechanism itself is based on false premises that have even been deep. There's a, a 2012 study that. Right, but so, right, right, but, right, but so, so, right, so we can get, we can get into that before. No, no, no. Right, right. We, we, can, get, we can get into that, but I don't the want you to be topic hopping. hopping. No, I want you to stop topic hopping. So, what I want you to do before we get into whether or not the amount of CO2 that humans release is impactful, I want you to just concede that your paper not only is indicative of the fact that that would increase temperature that would be anthropogenic, but that overall it doesn't even explain the entirety of the climate forcing. Can you just concede that or at least provide some more evidence of your position in, response, in, re in, re in response to the paper I've presented from Dessler? Um, I haven't 
I haven't read your paper yet, but yeah. And so what? And so but I, and so but, but I but I've explained to you what it out, I've, I've explained to you what it outlines. Right, your paper does not outline the magnitude of force, and what it outlines is the linear coefficient trend of it. Right, and so yeah, I, what you I can see is that it, 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 it can it can it can tra it can track with it. But one thing that we would predict is that if cloud variability is caused by climate change or caused by yeah, that, climate change, that's that it circular. would, that it would, no, it would, it's not circular. One thing we could predict is that if it were the case, that cloud variability. So I'm just going to lay out, I'm just going to lay okay. out the infrastructure and you can tell me where it gets circular. Okay. So if it were the case that anthropogenic climate change caused cloud variability, then what we would predict is that cloud variability would linearly coincide with anthropogenic means, but would not represent the mass majority of the climate forcing. Okay, yeah, so that, that's circular because you're, assu that you're, you're assuming that it can't be the other way, other way around. You're assuming that, that um, cloud coverage doesn't track with temperature and isn't causative and that it just yeah, happens. So if, it, no, 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 no because, because if it were the other way around, what we would predict is that it would track with anthropogenic causes and that it would be at a greater magnitude. But I'm not even sure that we would accept that. What we would actually expect, what we would actually, what we'd actually expect is that there's no linear coefficient there. What we would expect is that the cloud coverage would be the only thing that, um, that matters. Well, no, because a rise in the temperature increases the CO2 level. You know that because the ocean, because gas, gases are... Um, not very soluble in warmer waters, so an increase in temperature increases CO two. That's why we have a lag time. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, so yeah, I don't, yeah but I, that's I don't agree. Yeah, but that's true. But we're talking about cloud coverage, right? And the fact is that we would predict that climate change is going to increase cloud coverage by increasing the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Okay, but destabilizing things like the and destabilizing things like the jet streams and the polar vortices. There have been changes in um, in. In, in atmospheric oscillations, including like the North Atlantic, um, what's it called, the AMO, there have been changes there. That's why there, there has been a potential increase in hurricane intensification. Yeah, but, that, but, yeah, but, yeah, but that, that, that's that, mostly due to, for example, that, that's mostly due to uh, non anthropogenic causes. There was just a paper published by, about that in 2019. And so I know I just the problem okay. is you're on, a, you're, on a, you're on a huge, you're on a huge paper backlog, and I'm not taking yeah. you at your word. Well, the what underlying you're doing, well, you're, so can I just okay. point out that what you're doing is a your topic hopping. So every time I push you on something, you hop to a different topic. Because you're making B, assumptions you have the a, B, CO2, B, which is, B, is, is not there. It's I'm not making. Not I'm not making any assumption. I'm not making you any are. assumption. I'm making. Are, I'm making a predict. I'm, I'm making a prediction about what would occur, and then we can line that up with the empirical evidence. And then you're saying there's empirical evidence to the contrary, but you're not presenting it. And the problem is, is that I've already mentioned at the beginning that all of the predictions that are made by the CMIP tend to be in line with the actual empirical evidence. We can get into that if you want. Um, I'm really not. Uh, the problem is that the underlying mechanism for not just anthropogenic CO2, but CO2 Induced warming is just not there. It just then why do the then why do the models then why do the then why do the models correlate significantly? Because that's that's I mean I think we've gone over this, but that's because CO two tracks temperature. It doesn't cause temperature, and that's when we, when we see that in the historical model. In fact, I can I know I know I'm back of papers, and I'll reference that. You no, but the, this, pro the, but pro the pro the the problem is the CMIP is a prescriptive prediction. So it looks at the increases in CO2 and then predicts a future increase. And so it's not going to be sufficient to say that it is caused by an increase in global warming because what we actually see is that even addressing for that increase and that feedback so mechanism... Increase. So you're, well, yeah, you're we'll saying see. this model is very is highly reliable? Is that your claim that you see? Yeah. Uh, the problem is the climate models are not reliable. Even NASA has, has said has said outright that we need, they, they need to be the quote improved a hundred sure. in accuracy to be of use. So I'm, I'm not. I don't okay. think we're okay. Okay. So, so what I want what I want you to do is cite 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 NASA saying okay, that. Okay. Yes. I will, like, right now, I will cite it. Um,
Didn't you say you had a quote from NASA? Yes, yes, I am. I, I'm just finding it right now, but I do have it. Give me a second. <laughs> All right, so I'm putting a vote in general if you guys think he'll be able to produce this NASA quote or not. Probably not. I do have it. I mean, you can vote on that, but if you, uh, what you don't mind, um, I'm yeah. You can you can continue talking or whatever you. Um, but I, I do have it. I do, it's in my images. I just have too many pictures, but I will have it in very shortly. Well, we prefer not really like images. We prefer like actual like links. Oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll give I'll give you a link, but I'll send the image and also the accompanying link. But yes, I understand. Okay, that's um, that's the NASA page, and it, you, if you can see it, it says um, it says uh, it says thus today's models must be improved by about a hundredfold in accuracy. A very challenging tasks, a task. Uh, so this is cloud climatology. So I understand, like, I know you're a smart guy and you're making these arguments based on the CMIP and, you know, you're saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. 
I didn't know what that was. But uh, the problem is that you're relying on false premises. So you're making logical arguments. You're making logical arguments from false premises. This is what leads to... Sure. So what I want uh, you to do is actually yeah. just present the, the actual NASA page where they say that instead of a photo. Yeah, yeah and okay. I, and so I, what I want you to do, too, is have a page where they actually refer to some kind of empirical evidence for that basis. Because what's interesting is that if you actually Google NASA climate models, um, the first like 10 links from that will be NASA talking about why climate models are useful. Yeah, I mean, the, the I'm sure there are some people saying that, but... No, NASA, uh, NASA as an organization I, says that. Yeah, it says. And, and, yeah, NASA as an organization says that. So what I want you to do is reproduce the actual NASA document that has what you're saying. And if you could just start posting in general, uh, the Baker's will that would be also helpful. But definitely post in chaos. Because one thing, one thing that'll be useful is if you can actually rep, like, show me the page where this is at. What we can do is we can set that as a, a benchmark for when that statement was made. We can contextualize it to the kind of meta analytical views that were out there, and then we can look at more recent systematic reviews, like the Dessler one I just posted. Yeah, I mean, Wait, that, that I'm is, confused. It, it, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Is, is, is this what we're looking at here? Cloud climatology, computer climate models? Yeah, it's just the photo. Yeah. What, where does that say something about a hundredfold increase? It what it does in the about the it's the fourth uh, or no it's the it's one of the like highlighted texts there. Oh, so it's the one. Am I just blind? Where does it say that? Yeah, it does say it. Let me just find it for you. This is the doubling in atmosphere carbon dioxide predicted to take place in the next 50 to 100 years. No, no, no. We're looking for something that says the models have to be... What, did, what was that quote you said? A hundred uh, times more accurate? Where does it say that on here? Am I just blind? Maybe I'm missing it. It's the, uh, it's the fourth highlight down, and it's the second sentence in the fourth highlight. But I want him to reproduce the actual oh, page. Oh, okay, okay. I see it. Yeah, there, there is, there is, a, there is a, a URL in the, in the above, but yeah. Sure, I'll, sure. I'll... So, just re, so just reproduce it, and then we'll take it as a benchmark for when that was said, and then we can look at meta-analyses post for that. Okay, I'll, well now, oh, what's odd, the odd thing is, now, so I, I found a web page. I don't know if, the, if, if it's the exact same one. I, I can check it in, well, shortly. But what's interesting is it's saying they need to be improved tenfold in accuracy. And so that's, I just found that interesting right now. So I don't know if that was edited or what, or what. now it's updated with the data or whatever, but uh, the, the image is a hundredfold and I saw a, another web page that says tenfold in accuracy, so that's that's something. But I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll see the URL. Yeah, and so the point is, is just that we can look at what's being said in, in this article. But what we would want to do is relate it to the sources that they provide. And then what we would want to do past that is look at sources that are more updated. Because you already agree that it doesn't matter who's saying what or anything about consensus. What we want to look at is the actual data. So what sources do they provide? Yeah, well, okay. so what, yeah, so what, yeah, so what I, sources I do they provide on that document? Yeah, yeah I'm, aware, I'm aware I'm aware, I'm aware of this. So where in that document do they provide the sources that we come to that conclusion? It's, 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 it's the International Satellite Cloud Climatology Project. Um, I don't, I don't know the exact, uh, I like a the quantitative analysis for that hundredfold claim, but other, um, I know that there was even uh, an American Physical Society review in 2013 because they, all, I believe, they only do it every like five or six years. They're like, I, I. Uh, IPPC review statement and they, you know, their issue was that the margin of error was like tenfold greater than the uh, the actual uh, predictive value for a for an IPCC model or a, a, a IPC induced model. So I'll, I'll I'll also link that because uh -huh. that's a great thing. It's it's the American Physical Society 
uh, yeah. Climate so, do you, but but do, so do you understand? Do you understand the context these statements are being made in? Do I understand? This is this is the. This is a statement by the International Satellite Cloud. Yeah. Climate yeah. Project, so. yeah. And so the problem. Yeah. The, the problem. The problem is, is they can certainly say this about cloud coverage. They can say this within, you know, the ISCCP releases. But what I'm interested in is how does this fit into the problem that once we look at the CMIP, it tracks pretty, pretty clearly. Moreover, like what they yeah. what they want to what they want to say is that. Um, there's some kind of significant difference. So what you would need to show me is some kind of empirical analysis that shows that there is a, a, a non, like a non-significance due to overlap in the means. And um, there's another analysis from well 2008 it's obviously not current but uh it, it's in it's in the image above the uh the ISCCP and NASA excerpt and they say that that a uh, by by 2100 the projection is 3.7 plus or minus 130 degrees celsius which is obviously uh, ridiculous and then from from clouds alone uh the excerpt quotes all of the IPCC projections have uncertainties that are very much larger than the projected greenhouse temperature increase. And I'll also, I'll link the, I was referring to the American Physical Society uh, IPCC statement review. And yeah, I'll link that right now. Let me pull that up. Yeah. Um... Here, one second. So the pretty usual response to uh, skepticism about um, about climate modeling with respect to cloud coverage is the uh, published by Sepia and Bryant. And what they show in this paper is that, again, once you take into account climate models and cloud coverage and what we know about both, like cloud coverage and cloud variability, cloud feedback mechanisms in some tend to just exasperate anthropogenic global warming, and they do not explain forcings in totality. Yeah, and, and, and as I said before, I don't agree with the underlying mechanistic explanation. Well, you can, you can, you, but you can, you, so, you can, yeah. you can say that, but you a haven't presented any evidence for that, and b like you can, you can, you can do any, you can do, you can, you can do, you can do any amount of like mechanistic speculation you want, but so far. In terms of the empirical research and how we track things in terms of data, um, the, the fact of the matter is that cloud coverage tracks as an exasperatory method and not as its own sole driver. So, like, I've posted <laughs> A, the Dessler paper, which looked at uh, cloud variability as a, like a linear coefficient and tracking with climate change. And then now I've also posted Giuseppe and Bryant talking about how it acts as a feedback mechanism as well. The, the, the problem is if, you, if, we, if I can disprove the mechanism of anthropogenic CO2, which is, again, uh, right now it's an average of 4.3% of annual CO2, of annual CO2 increase. Right. But before, we, but, 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 before, but before we move to that, can you at least grant that uh, the most recent meta-analyses on cloud coverage variability tend to support the conclusion that it's anthropogenic global warming? They do not reject the conclusion that it's global warming? Yeah, there. I mean, there. There. I've been. I've, 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 I've not read meta I, I, I posted. I posted two meta analyses. Right? Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to have time. To I mean, what's 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 we, what's we, what's weird is that these are like the standard meta analyses. Like these are meta analyses that will be included in AR six as like hallmark meta analyses. They're done by like people in the field who are pretty widely respected. Well, there are a lot. What I'm interested. There are a lot of people in the field. But what, I'm, but what I'm, but the, 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 the point. The, 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 the point. The point. The point is, is that meta analyses don't care about who's respected or what specific person saying what they look at the totality of the evidence. And so what I'm interested in is how you think you can reject the totality of the evidence when clearly the meta-analyses on this topic have the opposite opinion to you. Um, the, uh, uh, the answer would be the meta-analyses including false premises about 
I mean, the, the, they, they don't include false premises. Can I, they're can looking, you, they're, 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 compar they're, compar they're comparative studies, so they look at both hypotheses. Yeah, and they see if they're both true. Okay. Yeah, so they, they look at the study and they look at both hypotheses and they see which one the evidence traps okay. with better. May I ask so, you, so there's a the prediction. Question. There's the, I, I there's, the prediction the, there's the prediction that you make, and there's the prediction that the opposite side would make. Well, well the problem is that the, the problem is the problem is the evidence the evidence yeah. tracks better. With, well, I mean, with, they, they, they may have data that's been manipulated. I know there are a lot of there are a lot of ways. You can, that, okay, they, I want you I want you to stop using throwaway terms. So when this is my question so when he so when he refers just to be clear, so when he refers to data manipulation, what he's talking about is the change from the historical climate research network to the modern. Uh, climate Research Network, where we updated a variety of field sites with better technology to get a better grip on what exactly our measurements were. And then from that saw that the previous models were in fact accurate, but that some sites were out of touch. But that in totality, it, t it tends to track pretty well. So you can see, like, you can just search up like the, U the US HCRN to US CRN switch, and you can see the graphs where they switch from just having the historical climate research network to the more modern research network, and you can see that they, they follow significantly. Okay, there's, no, but there's, no, there's no disjunction between those networks. There is, I'm sure there's a show. Okay, my question for you is, if it were found, which I mean, I can prove this, but I mean, maybe, maybe I have to go eventually, and maybe we can talk another time if you didn't find me yet to, uh, to uh, obnoxious or whatever, but um, if, you, if there was a if I proved or demonstrated adequately that the mechanism for CO2 increased driving temperature itself was fundamentally flawed, as well as the anthropogenic contribution to CO2 have no effect on total atmospheric CO2 concentrations. If you if you were to, if you were to concede that that a anthropogenic CO2 contributions really don't uh, affect atmospheric CO2 levels significantly, significantly, and two, uh, atmospheric CO2 itself doesn't drive global warming. In fact, um, I have not adduced this paper yet, but low CO2 can actually cause deglaciation in concert with other effects like a great oh, summer. I, 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 agree that, so, I agree that low CO2, I agree that low CO2 can cause deglaciation. That's not if low CO2. So, if you, you, under, were, you, under, you understand, I, I, understand I, I, what I I'm talking. You understand what I'm talking about is a global. I, I do. I do. Understand. It's not. It's not. I'm asking, not like, like this is this is the problem with getting into like historical I, 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 like ice cores and ice sheets and right. My my question, my theoretical question is, if you were if you were to concede those two points, that the mechanism for CO two just wasn't there empirically. There, like, uh, if you were to concede, Empir empirically, empirically, is I'm like asking, the highlight I'm, here. I'm asking if you were to concede. That the mechanism was flawed. The, the greenhouse gas theory itself, as a warming mechanism, was flawed. As as Rex as Rex Fleming, who's a top NOAA scientist himself, has. I, mean, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he was a, a top NOAA scientist, and he, he kind of was a whistleblower for all the data manipulation. And he even came up with a book that said straight out that CO two does not drive global warming. So it's really you can't say that I'm in a position of ignorance for for, for claiming this. When a top, and this guy was a mathematician, award-winning climate scientist at NOAA. Yeah, the problem, the problem, with, the, problem, the, problem the problem with Fleming is that book makes the case that cosmic ray incidence is the primary forcing, but cosmic ray incidence has increased over the past fifty years, which would mean that uh, <laughs> that it would have to have a negative cooling. Effect. Okay, well, there are other solar mechanisms besides cosmic. Well, I, I, I'm not saying. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm saying. Hard. I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying. That, I'm saying that not only is his proposed alternative. False, but that I'd also be very dubious of so his I mean, his 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 personal claim that there's uh, like some perhaps kind there of are issue problems there. with that. But there are also there are more problems overall with the anthropogenic theory. So I'm asking if you if you were to con if you if hypothetically you were to concede that the mechanism for CO2, either anthropogenic or just atmospheric CO2 driving global warming wasn't there. Um, if you were to concede that. Then, where would you go from there? Sorry, one second. I gotta devote for a minute. I'll be right back.
OK, I'm back. And the point is that you're asking me if the entire thing is like incorrect, then what I concede is incorrect. And obviously, I'm not a motivated reasoner. I would concede it. <clears throat> but I'm asking you, I'm asking so, you specifically so, okay. for the empirical evidence. Yeah, so you're asking for the empirical evidence about, um, about CO2, about the greenhouse effect of CO2 not being, not being significant and about, okay, so. Yeah, I yeah, want, like, yeah, I'll, if, I'll yeah. If if you could show me that my view was wrong, I would concede it. But you yeah. haven't done that, so I'm I, not correct. Going to. Correct. I've not. I've not shown that. I haven't taken the time to link that right now. I do have to eat soon, but I will. If you want me to come back later, because yeah, let's, 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 let's do let's do late. Let's do let's do later. I'm free in like four hours. Yeah, because we we, we both agree this is a nuanced conversation, right? We, we can't. Mm -hmm. I, neither of us tell. So we have a correlation. Therefore, I'm right. Right. That's that's not science. That's well, I mean. Some people do science that way. That's not legitimate science. That's not logical reasoning. So we, we agree about that. So I can show you that. Mm -hmm. But in some, um, it's basically, uh, I, I did, it's my, my now, well, I'm not really my, it kind of is my analysis of the historical greenhouse gas theory going from Svante Arrhenius to uh, Kurt Angstrom and then experiment, experiments in the 40s into the um, like experiments in the early 2010s that kind of inadvertently contradicted a lot of the refutations of Angstrom. So it's along that line of reasoning, and I'll present that. But yeah, we'll talk later. Yeah. Nice chatting with you. I do. You're, you're Isaac, right? No, I'm Bryn. Oh, you're Bryn? Okay. Oh, you, you, you kind of sound like him. Yeah. Was that, well, that I mean, me? I, I've been told we sound alike. Never be too certain. Okay.